cat interviews at uber confluent indeed and many many more companies i have seen it all after countless hours on the other side of the table i know exactly what top companies are looking for especially in lld in this course i'll share the insider blueprints what to focus on especially key design patterns how much multi threading very important counter question traps and how to tackle them confidently this course is structured practical and tailored on what companies are looking for right now let's get you into ready right now so now we have factory design pattern this is the first creational pattern although we saw a bit glimpse in the last lecture but take an example let's say if you know we have a system where we have to create different type of vehicles now obviously each time we create a vehicle we have to decide manually that you know which class we instantiate and even if i can very easily know okay okay i will just instantiate with the car but it might be possible that okay what if it requires some argument if it is not okay i need to know about the logic of instantiating a car it's not straight forward to me i have to as in a user have to go about and you know just check and not only this if the same creation happen at many places in your code then you would be repeating that creation logic at multiple places it would have been much better if you could maintain or place that at one place right but it is not because by default everyone will actually be creating their own car own truck own bike so maintaining that object creation across different places will be very messy if anyone could you know instantiate by a car like this someone will be car zero someone will say car with some engine passing so again although we can still get the flexibility but if everyone wants to initialize a car then it should be a uniform thing which will make things less error prone as well so what we saw that if i just hard code and you know just initialize the car like this in my actual main code which we will see just later on then it is very badly maintained code because it will have very rigidness let's see how okay so i have a simple vehicle in which i will have a car which will implement a vehicle then i will have a truck implement a vehicle then i have a bike implement a vehicle then in my actual main code itself imagine that i myself am instantiating all of these objects now this is what i did i did which is a user one let's say all these interfaces classes are you know common for everyone but now i initialize like this some other user user 2 in their own code initialize something like this okay you know and then user 3 again did the same thing but now the issue is what if the things i just now you know i am let's say the ceo of the company now i want that all the cars should be initialized in a specific way itself which means i have a new engine made for example i am you know a company let's say i'm a very very highly known company i now start making my own engine so i have to pass my own engine whenever i initialize the car earlier i was you know just initializing the car and then making my own engine but then i want to can now pass the engine in the car then everyone else will have to go and pass engine here engine here engine here you see that object creation people used to do it by themselves but again you never know what can come in the future so why are you even taking a risk of making the object by yourself and that is the thing that you should make sure now okay what if a future engine comes in then the creation logic of a car will change and that's the reason maintenance will become nightmare because now who will maintain this code like if things change i have to change it literally everywhere like who will be responsible for changing everywhere it's very hard now not only this but also in future let's say if i ask you that you know uh, have a different vehicle type so you will be adding a new vehicle type here everyone else will duplicate that vehicle type creation again and again not only this but also if the vehicle creation logic itself change right as you saw car logic changed then again every weight has to be changed so what's the resolution of this the resolution is aryan i will change you know again you are saying that the vehicle type is changed right vehicle creation is changed what i will do i will add some if else conditions what are those if else conditions i will simply say that okay if the vehicle is a car then i will create the car like this if it's a truck i'll take create i'll create like this if bike i'll create like this and so on and so forth so with that what will happen if there any if there is any other vehicle which will come in let's say you know uh, another vehicle which came in then i will have another else if condition and with that i will have a creation logic but did you see that it is still having that root cause issue that how will you maintain this at one place and not everyone should be making this because this is right now one user which is user 1 in its own code he is making this he is defining this which is not good 
and everyone else might end up defining something else. So what we can do? Okay, we can actually go towards factory design pattern. This says that it I will handle the object creation for you in a centralized manner. That whatever creation is there, I will handle it, but I will create it centrally. This means anyone who has to create any object will come to me and then I will create it and I will give it back to him. And that's what factory says. Okay, factory is a place, central place that everyone can call and make their product. So no one will be repeating that logic of creation of any object. This will be stored in the factory itself. And obviously it is more flexible and organized. Why more flexible? Because now if let's say something change in the future, I can just simply change in this factory. That's it. And organized obviously because the factory is organized just for doing one thing, which is creating an object. That's it. That's the only job of this factory. And only those objects which I want him to initialize and in the way in which I want him to initialize. Let's see how the code would look like. Exactly the same implementation of car, truck, bike. It's just that now I will have another class, which is vehicle factory, right? And it will have that creation logic, which earlier users were having. This is a separate class altogether, which will have the entire creation logic. Now, as we said that if the logic of creation changed, I can change it directly here itself, right? If, if, if this change, I can change it here. And again, I can also have this else if, else if conditions so that any new bike or any new vehicle com vehicle come in i can simply add one more condition and then i will incorporate the new vehicle as well thus now anytime everyone will call vehicle factory and then they will want okay i want cars i want cars object now again this object creation right now is very plain very straightforward simple new car but if let's say i want okay now i own the engine so i will want it should be new car but with the engine being passed and then engine also i will make myself so it was a new engine new engine so with that logic it will be changed like I, I can change it at one place and everyone else will be able to get a vehicle or a car i should say get a car with just simple change at one place and with that you just only wanted to give okay i want a specific car it's a simple string it's a simple string this string can be literally anything it can be a business business name that okay it can be you know uh, let's say if I have a company, let's say Maruti, so I can say Maruti car. This is a simple business name, but actual object, I can keep it here. Do you see that how decoupling, like how decoupling, how uh, centrally maintained thing it is, we are making. So advantages, obviously, it is centrally organized creation logic. Obviously, it is much more scalable because I would just have to keep it at one place and modify it at one place only. And obviously, it has that encapsulation field, right? Because you are not worrying about how exactly a car object is made. You will just call a car object. I will get a car object and I will start using it. I don't care about, okay, it, it accepts an engine or not. It accepts, you know, headlights or not. It accepts tires or not. No, I just want a car object. Get me a car object. That's it. I'm no more concerned about how that object is made. I don't have to write that code at all. Just get rid of it. Again, uh, as we saw in the last lecture as well, some of the real life use cases, as you can see, database connections, user interfaces, logging, I can literally say anywhere, anywhere where you can create an object, you can use factory. That's one of the most important design patterns, especially for interviews, because if you're not getting anything now, just say, okay, I'll use factory design pattern, just to create an object. Because obviously to work on any problem, you will have to have to create its object, right? So. Again, I'm just saying as a fail safe scenario, obviously you can say, okay, if you don't get anything, just say factory. I use factory to create the object. But obvious, but again, I said that primarily factory is used when you have different types of object creation. Again, the word is different types. It is not okay. Okay. I just say a Barbie object I will make. Then again, for this also, I need a factory. Then, you know, uh, let's say if anyone else, let's say Superman object I make. I, for this also, I need a factory. No, the things which can be linked at one place and I have different types of it. Again, randomly, if I'm giving any types for any, any, any problem, you know, maybe just one object I need to make, I don't need to fact, I don't need to have a factory for it. But obviously if I have multiple types, you know, if let's say I have cars, so I have multiple types of cars, let's say Maruti, Honda, and all that stuff, then obviously I will take a factory for it. That's the entire essence of factory. So if I have to conclude, I'll simply say that factory design pattern helps us to creation like helps us to make a very awesome creation logic of objects but making sure that this is centralized and obviously in a factory 
making sure that everything is clean, maintainable and easier to extend because we have just at one place. Obviously, as you saw, because it is, it is at one place, so I can easily add new types as well. Simply a else condition, I can add a new type and all, I can also change the instantiation logic just at one place itself without needing to modify any other piece of code which would be asking the creation logic from factory. Lastly, as I mentioned that it is best suited for applications that need to create a variety of objects. If you have to get just one object, please don't go and come to factory. That you can just do it by yourself as well. If you have to create variety of objects, then it is good to choose a factory for the creation because it helps you to keep it centralized and also keep it at one place so that in future if things change you will be flexible and be more scalable in terms of any new upcoming objects as well next we will see abstract factory in the next video make sure that you hit the like account of 250 likes and see you next video bye bye take care